Okay, so let's talk about configuring port security on a switch. And I'm using a basic network here with just four different PCs connected to F0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And uh, I've given an IP address to all of them. The switch is configured with a, let's just fast forward time so it finishes bringing everything up. Uh, the switch is configured with a basic configuration. Now, we want to look at port security configurations. Now, before we dive into that too much, let's talk about what the purpose of port security is. Port security is to ensure that only, uh, only authorized devices are allowed on your network. So the way it works is you set a maximum number of MAC addresses allowed on each interface. And this should be applied on every interface that's active, by the way, except trunk port interfaces. Um, so we set a maximum number of allowed MAC addresses. We set which MAC addresses are allowed. And then anything that's not allowed on that will block or do something else with. And we'll talk about what the options are here are in just a minute. Now, remember, I'm using F0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I want to configure port security on those four interfaces. So I'm going to do config T. Now, I could do each one of them individually, but because it's going to be the same configurations in all four of them, I don't want to do this four times. So I'm going to use the interface range command. INTRA is short for interface range. And I want to do F0, 1 through 4. Four, and that's going to allow me to configure all four of them at the same time. And you'll see now that my mode is interface range. So before I activate port security, I want to make these an access port. So it's switch port. I'll go ahead and type out the whole command here. Switch port mode access, or SWMOAC for short. It'll accomplish the same thing. So switch port mode access, and then I'm just going to push them into VLAN 1, which is the default VLAN. So it's switch port access VLAN 1. Okay, and now they're all inside that VLAN. We'll talk more about VLANs in another video. Okay, now that I've got that done, I can enable port security. Now, there, the first step is to actually enable it. And the command to do that is switch port port security. And you can shorten this on most Cisco switches to SWPO. We just hit enter and that just turns it on. Now, there are three settings that we're going to play with. So switch port, port security, question mark will show us the three that we care about. MAC address, maximum, and violation. So the way it's going to know if a device is allowed on the network is by MAC address. Because a switch is a layer two device, that's all it's paying attention to is layer two address and information. So we need to define how it's going to learn MAC addresses. And there are three options. This is actually going to show you two of them. We can do it statically, we can do it dynamically, or we can use sticky MAC addresses. Let's start with the two opposite ends of the spectrum first. To do a um, static MAC address, it would be switch port, port security, and then you type in the MAC address here. And then that MAC address will be allowed on that particular interface. Now I'm actually doing all four of them at the same time, so I probably don't want to do that. That I'm going to have to do on an interface by interface basis, which obviously gets time consuming. It's also error prone because it's easy to mistype a MAC address and block access to devices you want to have access. The other big issue with it is that MAC addresses sometimes change. So somebody has an Ethernet card die on their computer. So we get rid of their Ethernet card, we put in a new one. It's got a new MAC address. Their computer is no longer allowed on the network. That's something we're going to have to deal with no matter what. But it means if that happens, we have to come back and re-enter the new MAC address in order to get them up and running. Now, the other option, so if we don't want to do a manual MAC address, we can do a dynamic MAC address. And so the way this works is a switch is going to watch incoming traffic on ports, just like it does when it populates this MAC address table is going to do the same thing for port security. And so it's going to see the MAC addresses that come across and up to the maximum number that are allowed on a particular interface. It's going to see that MAC address come across and it's going to say, all right, I'm going to allow this MAC address. The default, by the way, is one. So the first MAC address is going to be learned and that'll be the only MAC address that's going to be allowed on that port. 
But with dynamic MAC addresses, those aren't saved. So when you reboot the device, it forgets who was where. And so now, the, uh, when the device comes back up, the first uh, MAC address that it sees, it assumes is valid. That's dynamic MAC address, which is the default. The other option, which is halfway between the two, is switch port MAC address sticky. And so what will happen is it will learn MAC addresses dynamically. But it will also save them in the running config. So once the system's been up for a while and it's learned a bunch of MAC addresses, we can then go in and save that running configuration. And then those will be saved from And then if we replace a network card or we switch out a computer or something like that, then we have to go in and remove that MAC address and let it relearn and then uh, we'll save it again. So I want to enable sticky MAC addresses. Now the next uh, command is switch port port security max. And this is just the maximum number of uh, uh, addresses, MAC addresses we're going to allow on, a, on an interface. The default is one. By the way, this should never, ever, 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 ever be done on a trunk line. You should only do this on access lines. We don't want to do this on anything that's connected to another switch only things that are connected to PCs. Um, so, how many ma addresses are we going to allow on this port? The default and probably the best option is going to be one. So we're just going to leave that alone. Or we could do switch port max, max two. That'll change it to two. Let's switch it back to one, which is what it should be. The other one is the violation mode. So switch port, port security, violation mode. And there are three options here. Protect, restrict, shut down. All right, if it's protected, the default, by the way, is shut down. We'll get to that in a second. If it, you set it to protect, just like that, what will happen is when a second MAC address is seen, the switch port will block that traffic. It will still allow stuff from the first MAC address, the valid one that we allowed uh, initially, but it will block everything else. Now, it doesn't notify you. It just does it, but doesn't tell you about it. So somebody can be switching out devices, and this is kind of the whole idea behind this, is we don't want to allow somebody to bring in a device and plug it into our network and use it to potentially try to hack our network. The idea of this is to stop that. So if I set it to protect, it will stop that, but I won't know that somebody was trying to do it. So the next step up is switch port, port security, violation mode, restrict. And using restrict, what will happen is it will block the traffic. It will still allow the valid traffic from the valid uh, ports that we wanted. But it will block the traffic and it will also uh, create a notification and a log. Now if I don't go look at the log, I don't know that. But... If I do look at the log, then I'll see, hey, somebody was trying to, they plugged up another device to one of these ports. And so um, I do know that somebody was trying to hack my network. Now, both of these have a drawback. And that is a hacker can figure out what you're doing. So if you do switch port, port security violation mode protect, and they unplug your PC that's allowed, they plug in their laptop with all their hacking tools on it, it will get blocked. They unplug that, they plug the original PC back in, they realize this one still has access. Well now what they can do is they can look at the MAC address on your PC, unplug your PC, plug theirs back in, spoof the MAC address that's allowed, and the switch will allow them through. So what that means is the more secure uh, option and the default one is shut down. And with shutdown, what will happen is that port, when it sees an invalid MAC address, it will actually kill the port. So now, when they, if they try to spoof the MAC address and try it again, they still are blocked out because we've shut down the entire port. Okay, so those are the settings that we're going to look at most often. So I'm going to exit out of here. Whoops, went to me. There we go. And let me do a show running config. And so here are our options. We have switch port, port security. Now notice not everything we put in show, is showing up. So switch port mode access, that's showing up. Switch port access VLAN 1 is not. That's a default setting. Everything's part of VLAN 1 by default. Port security is turned on. MAC address sticky is turned on. Notice we don't see the maximum or the violation mode. 
That's because those are default settings. What I can do is show port security interface F01. And this will give me all of the details. So port security is enabled, port status is secure up, violation mode is shut down, aging time, uh, aging information, maximum MAC address. No MAC addresses have come across this. So let's generate some traffic. So I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go here and from this device, go to my command prompt and I'm going to ping 192.168.1.11. Let's type in the whole address. 1.11. one dot twelve and one dot thirteen and that will just generate some traffic that should hit all of our devices so let me come back to my switch and now let me do a show run and now you're gonna see we've learned MAC addresses for all four of these now again this is not gonna be saved until I uh, save the configuration. But if I do a copy of run start from this point on, it will remember my MAC addresses. Now if I show port security interface F01, we'll see that it's still enabled, we're still secure up, and now we have a MAC address associated. One sticky MAC address, a total of one, we're only allowing one. Okay, by the way, the security violation count right here, this is where if you're running restrict and you make a change and it blocks traffic, it'll show up there as a violation. All right, let's see what this actually looks like. So I am going to disconnect this line right here. And then I'm going to take this one, which should be plugged into F04. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to delete the line and recreate it. Disconnect that, and then I'm going to recreate a connection to F03. And then fast forward time. OK. So this is 1.13. So let's see if we can ping 1.13 from here. Which, that should have been the last one we just tried to do. So we'll hit the up arrow. Now the first one we might lose because of ARP. But then it should start replying and notice that it's not. We're still getting timeout, timeout, timeout. And the reason is because that port should be shut down. Let's take a look at our switch real quick. Oh, look, we're down. And that should be F03. So on our switch, I'm going to issue the command show port security interface F03. And now notice port status is sh secure shut down. So we have, we've seen something we didn't like on it. We saw the second MAC address because we switched the PCs that were connected to it. And it shut down the port as soon as it did it. So let's go ahead and restore our configurations. So I'm going to take, we're going to eliminate that line. And we're going to put this PC back in F03 and this PC oops let's get the right thing here there we go this PC back in F04 now fast forward time notice this one is now active still which means I should be able to ping 10.13 again or 1.13, and I can. Can I ping 1.12? No, I can't, and that's because that is still on that F03, which is still shut down. Even though I restored the right uh, device to it, it still has shut down that interface. So I need to reactivate that interface. And the way I do that, 
go to config t interface f03 and I'm going to shut down the interface. That's going to change it to administratively down. Then I'm going to no shut down it to bring it back up. And it now should be reactive. Exit show port security interface F03. And port status is now secure up. So if I administratively shut it down and then bring it back up, it turns off that um, violation. Go ahead and fast forward time here. And now I should be able to ping the PC that's on that port, which is F012. And there we go. All right, so we've configured port security. We've talked about our port security configuration options. And we have generated a violation and showed you how to recover from it. So that is your real quick introduction to Cisco switch port port security.